Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a bowl of juicy peaches in watercolor. This painting is so summery and it was inspired by the book The Peach Keeper by Sarah Addison Allen. If you were listening to The Peach Keeper on Audible, you'd feel things like butterflies or goosebumps or maybe even weak in the knees because with an Audible performance so powerful, you can feel the romance anywhere. Start a 30-day trial and your first Audible book is free. Learn more at audible.com slash frugal crafter or click the link in the video description today that's audible.com slash frugal crafter and i thank audible for sponsoring today's painting tutorial so this picture was my inspiration for the painting we're going to do today i painted this uh, a couple weeks ago and i just really like the texture and the uh, the look of this peach and several people asked for a tutorial so i figured it would be a great opportunity um, but i just kind of thought the peach on its own was kind of dull so i thought we would do kind of a bowl of peaches and uh, maybe one kind of on its own. So what I like to do often when I am um, composing is I like to have things kind of go off the page so that it just is a little more interesting. So I'm just very, very lightly sketching in the edge of a bowl there. Um, I, I would even sketch it lighter if I wasn't doing a tutorial. Then I think I'll just put a little peach on its own kind of over here next to the bowl. Just get that kind of basic round shape with a little bit of a indent on the top and then in the bowl is actually going to be a branch of peaches so I'm going to start by sketching kind of an, an indication of where this branch is going to be and we're also going to have some leaves uh, peach leaves coming off of the branch and I'm just getting in basic shapes here and um, if you're not comfortable sketching right on your paper, you can go ahead and sketch on some like copy paper and then use some graphite paper to transfer it on. I just like to, um, if it's something fairly organic and easy, I'll just go ahead and sketch it right on my paper. Um, I wanna get one kind of peach right out in front and center. This is gonna be one that's going to be kind of a focal point. So I want it to be right there, right, right in the center. And I'm gonna have one kind of tucked underneath. And don't worry, I can erase any of the extra like duplicate lines that I'm making here. Then you have one kind of just peeking in there. And I want to have a bunch more leaves. And I will uh, put a reference photo on my website so you guys can check that out uh, if you want a photograph to go by as well. I'm not following it exactly, but um, but it'll give you a good idea of what I was uh, what I was working from. Okay, so now that I've got these basic shapes drawn, um, I want to do something with a bowl. This bowl is actually, it's a, like a handmade wooden bowl, so I just kind of want to get that thick um, edge. And the nice thing about it being like a hand-turned wooden bowl is that um, it's as opposed to like a plastic bowl or, um, you know, ceramic, something that's machine-made or, you know, that you could get perfectly smooth. It's going to have a little bit of like a organic feeling to it. So if you didn't draw a perfectly oval, oval, um, it's not going to look funny. And the fact that it's half off the paper also makes it a little bit more um, easy to, you know, not have to be so perfect. And I'm just making that a little bit rougher there on that edge. So then what I like to do is find a really soft race, eraser. And any of your white plastic or white vinyl erasers are really good for this. I can go in and I can just take out any of my lines that I don't want to keep and I just so I just want to erase anything that I don't want to be a final line for me and you could keep uh, more in your sketch than I do it's completely up to you just want to have the I just want to have the basics I don't want to have any more than I need because sometimes I change my mind and if I don't have too many guidelines to um, inhibit me I can kind of go in different directions and then often I will just use a, a brush to brush off the eraser crumbs also if you have a line going through something else like the side of this bowl is going through that leaf that, that's a great thing to uh, erase at this point so now we just have a very basic sketch here and I'm just using a regular pencil to sketch so sometimes those lines smudge a little bit so if I swished over it with my hand, oftentimes I would end up um, just making a big mess of it. So what I'm going to do is actually put an, a unifying wash all over this whole paper. So I'm going to give this a nice big uh, 
coating of water and the brush I'm using here is an oval wash by the company Royal Nickel. it's from their Zen line and it's a very affordable line of really juicy brushes um, I like them very well I don't like them quite as well as a Princeton Neptune or a Creative Mark Mimic but um, but they're really nice and uh, definitely worth the money they're quite a bit cheaper than those two options so something to keep in mind so I don't want puddles but I do want to make sure that it's uniformly sh uh, kind of shiny and now I'm going to add some color so I want to get colors that I plan on using and that will you know work well with the composition um, I want to also have some kind of earthy colors so I'm going to grab some yellow ochre and I'm going to put some of that here in the bowl because uh, anything I paint over this is going to show up pretty well so uh, whether it's a leaf or a peach it doesn't really matter it's going to show up pretty well over this yellow ochre I'm working on arches paper so I do find that I have a little more control on that it's not gonna my colors are not gonna go crazy on me like they might with another paper and I also I like to try to get in all the colors I plan on using in this step I know I want something that's kind of turquoisey in here so I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this um, this beautiful turquoise color I think it would be really pretty it because it's um, it's a blue and it's kind of opposite of the peach color that we're gonna be making so I think that will be really nice for um, making our peaches stand out it's such a pretty color and I will list the colors that I use in the video description I'll have to uh, double check them on my color chart and just make sure I know this is uh, a mix I believe of PV uh, PB 15 and PG 7 but it is a premixed color I'm using the Rembrandt watercolor palette today but you can use whatever you have and if you don't have the right color just mix mix one but you can see how even though this paper is really wet I'm still able to control where I'm putting my color now for one of the reds I'm going to use I think I will use um, kind of like a scarlet or vermilion or cad red deep something that's kind of a warm strong red I try to get something that's not super opaque though because I don't I, w I want to be able to see through my layers and I'm just throwing it here and there on some of the peaches try not to get it on the leaves just because it's gonna be really dark when you go to glaze over your leaf colors but any place you're gonna have peaches as long as it's not gonna run too much you can put this color don't cover up everything though and please excuse any um, odd sounds you see <laughs> you see you hear uh, because it is school vacation and uh, the kids are all home now the nice thing about working wet into wet here is that you are gonna get some of that fuzzy um, quality that peaches have just just on their own so so that's kind of nice now I did accidentally get into a leaf there so I'm just gonna gently blot off that red and I think I will go with a smaller brush because this one is pretty big this is like a one inch oval wash so you can see it's com in comparison to my hand how large it is so um, if I want to go with a little bit less paint I will switch brushes this is a one of the mimic Kalinsky so it's a fake Kalinsky brush by Cre uh, creative mark it's also a really nice one to use and I am going to go in with a kind of like an olive or sap green and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on some of my leaves the more you get on your paper in this step I mean providing you don't go too crazy the less work you're gonna have later on you're not gonna have uh, unpainted areas to try to figure out what you want to deal with what you want to do with them And since I've thoroughly wet my paper, I haven't had any issues with it drying on me as I'm working. I'm not trying to get any detail at this point, just trying to get a nice um, unifying wash all over everything. Another color I want to get in at this stage will be um, a shade of brown. You can use burnt umber or burnt sienna, whatever you prefer. But that will be the brown you'll be mixing from. So. You know, just make sure you choose something that's going to go with some of these other colors. I just want to get some of this in the um, bowl here. And I know I'm going to want a brighter yellow as well. 
So I'm going to go with this nice vibrant yellow and just kind of add that into some of the peaches as well. Um, so do as much of this as you can do now, the better off you're going to be because it's going to save you time when you do your painting and when you're glazing and you're adding more layers because you already have a good base of, um, of form and color already. At this stage, I think I'm going to let it dry and then we'll come back and we will add our next layer. Our paper is nice and dry, pretty dry anyway. Whenever you touch the back of your hand to your painting, if it feels room temperature, it's dry. If it's still cool to the touch, it's still a little damp. I wanted to show you the colors that we're using today. Um, we've got Burnt Sienna, PBR7. You could also use Burnt Umber, like I mentioned before. Uh, we have Turquoise Blue, which this one happens to be a mix. It's PB15 and PG7. Uh, if you used the like a Cobalt Teal or Cobalt Turquoise, that's going to be more opaque. Um, so I would recommend, if you don't have these colors, go ahead and mix this color using PB15 and PG7, okay? Same thing. Doesn't matter a bit. You don't have to buy that color uh, if you have the other two. Using olive green, you could also use sap green. You want an earthy green. I'm using yellow ochre. I just think it's a nice kind of sweetening color, uh, but you know, you can mix a neutral yellow. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. You can mix it using um, your cad yellow and your brown. It will be very similar. And uh, so we got a cad yellow deep and we have a cad red deep. So these colors are um, nice and strong colors that we can, you know, add water to dilute them like we did in the background here. So I think it would be kind of pretty if we had kind of like a, a weathered old table for our peaches to be sitting on. So I'm going to mix up a nice dark color and I'm going to use my cad red and my turquoise blue. And because that turquoise blue is kind of greenish, it's going to give us a really nice um, dark, almost um, brownish, purpley black basically. So I'm going to start off with my turquoise because that's what I need the most of. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some of the red into there. That's our CAD Red Deep. Remember, you can uh, you could pause the video if you need to, or you can use the gear at the bottom of the video to speed things up. So you can see we're getting a nice neutral here. It's a nice, almost chocolatey brown color. I actually like that because it can kind of look how, um, you know, wood looks if the, if the paint is chipped off. So what I'm going to do is make some panels. Like I'm thinking this is an old farm table and we've got some uh, divisions in between the slats. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to make some wide and make some narrow. So we've got this really old weathered table. That's what I'm going for. And the reason I like to put my darkest shadows and whatnot in first is because if I do that, then I know, um, I know how dark my darkest values will be and it'll be easy to work the other parts of my painting um, once I know that I, what my darkest values are. So, and also by putting like slats of my table like this, I'm actually dividing my uh, paper in thirds and that looks really nice in the rule of thirds. So uh, when you divide things into thirds, both this way and that way, it just makes your, your eyes just really like the effect a lot more. So I'm also going to add some of this underneath my, uh, my bowl and I'm sure you can hear my kids having a good time. I think my husband just got home from work, so they're greeting him. Um, I can add some of that under there and then I can either drag it carefully across with this brush or what I like to do is grab like a flat brush and kind of drag some of that paint out. It'll just give me kind of like a weathered appearance. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of these shadowy blotches. These can be also nail holes in the table, but I like just kind of dragging it out so I get some weathering on this uh, old turquoise table. I did a painting of pears a while back and used that same kind of technique on the edge of the shelf they were sitting on. I thought it was such a pretty technique. And don't you just love a shabby chic look of wood that's all weathered. And remember, we're going to be adding to this, over this, we're going to be layering. So anything we do here, it's not, it's not the end all be all. We're going to be doing more to it. So have fun with this. This is all areas of the wooden table. Anything you do here to make this look kind of distressed is going to make your peaches look more perfect and more smooth and um, just really nice. So you want to do that up to this top panel of the table as well, and then we're going to let that dry. OK, 
Okay, this is all dry. So now I want to put some patches of brighter turquoise in here. And um, you'll see the reference photo linked down below on my blog. Um, and you'll notice that the background is not this bright. It's not this, this turquoise, but I really like that. And that's a wonderful thing about being an artist is that you can alter um, your painting the way you want it to be. And I'm using a three quarter inch flat. You could use, um, you could use any size flat. You could even use round if you want. But I like this just to kind of give me some different types of strokes than my round brushes do. Uh, use whatever you're comfortable with, but I just think it's kind of nice to uh, be able to almost push yourself to just try something different. And you do not have to cover everything with this turquoise in the background, but I think it's it's just kind of nice to be able to just kind of slop it in there here and there. You can keep it choppy or you could do a complete glaze all over everything. A glaze is simply a transparent layer of color. So you can see the richness of this band versus these other two. I just think it looks nice. If you don't care for the look of that, you do not have to do it. I think it's going to make our peaches seem a little more vibrant and lively when we have that, um, that kind of opposite color in there. But again, it's your painting. You can do whatever you want. So to make this a little bit easier for me to uh, reach, what I like to do sometimes is just turn my painting and I'm just going to go right up against here, lay down my color. This way I can kind of get around that uh, the contour of that leaf a little bit easier. And then I'm, I like to kind of drag it in choppy strokes. If it skips the paper here and there, I actually like that. I think it looks kind of like, um, I don't know, like weathered wood. So you can let it skip. If you decide you don't like the look of that, you can go ahead and paint it in a little bit fuller. I do intend to also put a little bit of brown in this, um, in like kind of patches over this um, background texture, just because I think it might look like some bare wood showing through. And I think that might be a nice look as well. And after something dries too, you can always go back in and add more. So if you ever think that watercolor is just like, well, you better get it right the first time or it's, or there's no hope, that's absolutely not true. You can keep going back and adding to and amending a, um, a painting until you have it just the way you want to. Especially if you're working on a nice durable paper like this, Arch is 100% uh, cotton. It will just take a lot of, uh, a lot of the wear and tear, like scrubbing and glazing and lifting and, um, adding layer upon layer and getting it wet and dry again. It's got the sizing in it that will that will hold up to that. So I just want to take care when I go around the contours of an object, such as the bowl or the peach, because I don't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, get that, get that blue in there where like on top of the, the flesh of the peach, because that's going to get really grayed out if I went to paint the peach colors on top. So I'm just taking a little care there and I pretty much, I mean, with the exception of a few areas, I let me kind of rough and skip over. I pretty much glazed everywhere on this tabletop and I really like the look of it. I think it, it just builds up to a richer painting. Okay, so I'm going to rinse off my brush there and I want to do some work inside the bowl. I want to kind of paint the shadows and I want to get a color that is going to really be representational of the wood. So I'm going to first start off with my burnt sienna because that's probably the most woody color. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that, um, that turquoise in there. And you can see that it turns it kind of a, um, almost like a, uh, almost like an oceany green, it almost looks like algae when you look at those two colors together. But if I think, okay, what's the opposite of green? I want to take that green out of there. So I want to put in the opposite. I know we got a little glare there. Um, I'm going to go for my red and that's the same red that I was using. You always want to mix from the same colors. So I got this cad red deep. I'm just going to kind of add it in there and I get a nice rich, um, almost chocolatey red, a chocolatey brown. And you can keep balancing those colors until you get just the right shade. So I know I'm going to be using quite a bit of this shadow color, so I don't care if I have a little bit extra because it will go to use. So I've got that there in that well. And then what I'm going to do is just start looking at my composition here and kind of carving out 
some of the areas where I want the shadow. So I want to kind of go around some of the peaches. I've got quite a bit of paint in water on my brush, probably more than I completely need, but I just want to get kind of like painting the negative space around everything in here. I'm not 100% sure how much I'm going to want leaves and how much I'm going to want to be shadow, so I'm going to reserve a little bit in that area. And I don't want to paint the um, outer ridge of the bowl because that I'm going to want um, to be a little bit lighter because it's going to be closer to our light source. So basically, I'm just going in here and painting the area around my peaches. Now, if I decide I want to kind of taper it as I go up the edges kind of of the bowl and make it a little bit lighter, what I can do is grab a little of that um, burnt sienna on its own and I can add that in there right next to it and kind of let it fade in together, let them blend. Now this brush is number 10 Aqualon. It's not, doesn't come to a super sharp point. So if I do feel like I can't uh, get in and get the detail that I want, I can switch to a different brush, which I might end up doing in a minute. Or maybe just switching to a little bit of a smaller one. The same thing all the way around. Just be careful if you're laying your hand down, like to rest it on the table. Um, if your background is still wet where you just painted the blue, you're going to have to be careful that you don't lay your hand in the wet paint. I like having that um, burnt sienna right next to that mixed dark color because then I can just dip my brush in it and slightly alter the color as I work the way, work my way up the edges of the bowl where it's going to be a little bit lighter. And honestly the fact that we've put the color down to begin with on our paper when we did that wet into wet wash to kind of unify everything, that's really making the work a lot easier in this stage. I do like to work with the biggest brush that I'm comfortable with just because it um, makes the work go a lot quicker and then when I get into the more detailed areas then I get to, then I can slow down with those smaller brushes and, and have a little more fun that way but this kinda gets a lot of the work done out of the way right off the bat. Now in here, I just want to make sure I don't do too much because I might want to put extra leaves in. And I'm just kind of thinking about, am I going to be seeing the bottom of the bowl here or would I see another peach? Just, you know, don't want to paint myself into a corner, so to speak. And when you do this, this type of like kind of negative painting, you are, it is kind of weird because you're trying to paint what isn't there. You're painting around your, your subject, so it can be a little strange. That's a wonderful technique to learn. And then I think um, I'm just going to grab some of this lighter color, just kind of fade that shadow out. I can always, you know, glaze some green on there later if I feel like I wanted it darker, but that'll give me a nice kind of fade out point. All right, so now I need to let this dry and um, we can proceed. So I'm just going to hit this with a hairdryer and we'll be right back. Now we're going to begin with this peach over here and because I want the peach surface to remain fuzzy I'm going to do a wet into wet technique so I don't end up with any hard edges. So I'm going to begin by wetting this peach and I've switched to a number eight round because I felt like the um, the 10 was a little bit too big for here and I just basically want to give this peach kind of like an all over um, coating of water. It should have kind of a, uh, a satin sheen to it after I've got it all coated and I just tip it to the light to make sure that's what in fact I do have. And when I have it like this where it's not super shiny, 
it's just kind of like a satin sheen. I'm going to be able to place colors down and they're going to stay where I put them. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit more detail. And I am going to start with my lightest color, which is my cad yellow. And I'm going to put some of that right along that uh, indent in the peach. I'm going to put some up here along the top. And I'm going to put some kind of in here in the middle. And I'm going to get a little bit out here on the edge. Now I am going to mix some of my cad yellow with a little of my cad red to make a nice orange color. And I'm going to be adding that here and there as well. I want to make sure that I have, that my edges are good. I want to be able to represent all the different colors that I see in a peach. And I want these colors to blend. I do also want them to stay where I put them. The next color I'm going to go, I'm going to soften that a little bit because we don't have any really hard, uh, hard colors here. And the next color I'm going to go for is the Cad Red on its own, but I didn't clean my brush. I'm just going right in with my dirty brush. I'm going to put that indent in there. This is kind of the, um, the seam of the peach. And I'm going to throw some of that in over here because you will see patches that are um, that are darker than others. And then I'm going to grab the red. Just I'm going to clean my brush and grab the red on its own. And I actually might put just a smidgen of my blue in there. Let me see what that looks like before I, um, I'm just going to mix it right here. So I got the red. I'm going to see what that looks like with just a little bit of that blue. It might get too gray. I think that's all right. So it's just kind of like a maroony red kind of color. And I'm going to add that right in here. So rather than taking a color that would make more of a, of a uh, rich purple, I'm going with what I've already used because that's going to um, look more realistic and true in this painting. But if you were using a different blue, try that. There. Now if you have any areas where you want to bring back a lighter color, you can grab a paper towel and you can kind of dab and then that will kind of give you that hazy fuzz that a peach has without you doing too much extra work. And sometimes I like to get that right on the edges because it looks like that fuzz is kind of being lit up from behind. And since you're wet and to wet that that uh, paper will stay wet and the paint won't really sink in and dry and uh, you'll be able to lift that up. Plus these are sedimentary colors for the most part, the yellows and the reds, so you can uh, you can lift it up. So I'm going to do the same technique on these peaches, but I'm just going to kind of, um, I can skip around a little bit. So if I do this peach, then I can go and do this peach. I can just want to kind of be able to skip around a little bit. I don't want to do two that are touching just so that I can keep the um, keep them from flowing into one another basically. So again we're going to wet the peach. I'll do this one with you and then we will finish the other ones up on our own. You can pause the video and you can um, you can do the same technique to the others. And when I come back I will um, explain any differences but it's basically going to be the same technique you just might vary where you put the colors. So for instance this peach right here since it is underneath um, this peach on top. I'm going to use my darkest color right there. Um, I am going to start off, I'm not going to mix any colors yet. I'll start off just with that red there. And I'll grab some of that red over here. I have a leaf coming in so I want to not paint that because it'll be difficult to get on top of afterwards. So it would be difficult to paint over rather. You don't really have to paint them in any particular order too. You can you don't have to do yellow first, obviously. I'm doing the red first here. 
slide that up a little bit more for you. I'm going to grab this. And you can even drop in the color too. If you if you get a little watery and you just want to kind of drop it in, you could do that. And then I can go in with my mixed color, which was that red and blue. And if I want to put an extra little bit of shadow like in this area here where it would be a little bit darker, I can do that. It makes it a little bit fresh there. It should be definitely way more red than just a little touch of that turquoise. That's all it really takes. There. Now you might end up, if you're doing this technique and you're using um, uh, like a wood pulp paper, you may end up having some bits of bloom happening here. That's when, you know, you have, because your paper might dry inconsistently or dry too quickly for you. Um, and if that happens, if you see a puddle, just go ahead and dry your brush off and set your brush in the puddle or just dab it with a paper towel to avoid that. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. So then the next one I'd go to would be one not touching that one. So I go up to this one, do the exact same thing and just kind of work my way around till all the peaches were done. So um, just go ahead and do that. Vary your colors a little bit between the peaches. So like if I have this really dark one here, I'm going to make that one quite a bit lighter. Um, you just want to make sure they all look a little bit different, but you're using the same color. So they all are obviously, you know, peaches from the same vine. And we'll be back in a minute after you've done that. Something I wanted to stop and share right here was there's kind of some striation in this peach. So I put my yellow here and my red here after wetting it. And now I'm going in with a uh, another brush. It's just a synthetic, um, not a very absorbent brush. And I'm streaking the red down through the yellow, just kind of pulling those colors back and forth to give me that striation that the peaches have. It's a very quick way to do this and to get that nice effect. And then I can... Um, go in my darker red up there, which of course is, as you know, a mixture of my turquoise and my cad red, and I can get that nice shadow up there. But I wanted to show you that striation um, because it might be a little difficult to see how I got that if you are looking after it's all dry. Um, so yeah, it's just a, and you can do it with this darker color too, just kind of gently flick it uh, down into the wet paint and it's going to they're going to mellow out as they dry so you're not going to get a really strong um, look but it will give you that kind of streaky look that some peaches have and um, I noticed that that one had it pre predominantly and the other ones didn't so I thought it'd be kind of nice to just kind of show you how I did that if you want to make it a little bit stronger you can go back in pick up some color I think that that if you drop it in, wipe your brush off and then streak it, you get a better effect. And then you can even pick up some color down here, deposit it like near the edge. And this is another Royal Nynical brush. This is a fusion. I've actually even used these for oil paints, not these particular brushes, but this, this line of brushes. Um, it's not as absorbent. It's a little firmer, but it's kind of good for this technique because you're not going to introduce too much, um, too much water. So I thought that was kind of a fun look. If I tip it, you can kind of see a little bit more about how you got to drag that color around. And of course, if you want to get any of that kind of fuzzy look, you can blot it before it dries with the paper towel. Just don't go overboard. Or you're going to lose um, some of the effect there. So I just wanted to pop in and show you that. And also to remind you that colors do shift lighter as they dry. So you may be a little freaked thinking, wow, that's really bright. But as it dries, look at that. It's going to shift. It's going to get soft and much lighter and uh, we will be glazing on top of that some more so please don't fret if uh if you're surprised at the shift that you get because when your surface is really wet you're going to get a bigger shift that's just how the cookie crumbles don't be afraid to skip around your painting as you're working while you're waiting for something to dry. So that peach is wet, that peach is wet. Um, neither of them are touching the edge, so I figured this would be a really good time to go ahead and um, work on the rim here. And I've got burnt sienna just on its own. And I'm going to kind of go in there and just kind of put some kind of Oh, just kind of streaky, linear bits in here. I'm trying to get the feeling of oh, some kind of wood grain. I, I want the color to kind of be a little variegated. So I've got the burnt sienna. Now I'm going to grab some yellow ochre, which we used in our initial wash. It's kind of this uh, brownish yellow color. 
And now I'm going to go in and kind of add that here and there as well. If they bleed together, that's fine. If they stay separate, that's fine too. I just basically need to get another layer of color on the on this uh, portion of the painting. And I might as well do it while nothing next to it is wet and I'm waiting for something to dry. I think a lot of times people think that they've got to get something painted in one go if they were using watercolors, but that's really not the case. Um, there's so many different ways to approach a watercolor painting. You can go all at once, like a la prima, in one layer and wet and wet and call it a day, or you can build up and you can take your time and you can keep adjusting until you get just what you want, which I think is though the great thing about this medium. It can, it can uh, be whatever you want it to be there. So that's a, just a basic um, kind of glaze on the rim of the bowl. And while I have these colors out, I want to go ahead and work on the uh, stem as well. This might be a little bit big for the stem, so I think I am going to zoom in and also grab a smaller brush. I'm just going to grab this number four round and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we've got the stem up here kind of protruding off the edge of our painting. And I'm going to grab my yellow ochre and I'm just going to go in here at the top and I'm going to drag it down. So I want to avoid the leaves. But I'm also using this color to kind of wet the stem. And I know I'm going to have some a bunch of leaves in here, so I am going to continue that down a little bit. Um, this is all going to be leaf in there. I wasn't sure when I first sketched it in, but that's what it's going to be. And now I'm going to go in with my burnt sienna and paint the other half of my stem. And let the colors kind of float together. Pick it up back down here under this leaf. And then I can drag the colors together a little bit. And we can do more to it later, but that at least gives us a nice base for that. Now, if you see that you may have dropped a, a speck of water anytime you're working, all you gotta do is just press it straight up. Oftentimes it won't even lift what's underneath. So um, just kind of a nice handy trick for you. Now, if you do have some more dry area within the bowl, you might want to do a little bit of, um, kind of finessing that and you can use a variety of brushes for that. You can use one of the rounds you've already had. I try to use something that's not too absorbent. So I find that flats are less absorbent and this is just an inexpensive half inch flat. And what I'll do is I'll grab like, I will grab one of the colors I've used. So I'm going to grab this burnt sienna and I'm mixing it in with a little of this, uh, that turquoise mix that we had for the background. And what I'm going to do is just kind of add a little bit of interest just by uh, kind of wiggling it back and forth. This will just give it that kind of organic look. We don't want everything to look completely the same. We want to have a little bit of um, interest and different stuff happening. So I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm gonna add a little yellow ochre in here. You can also play with these colors up here on the rim. Get that striation of perhaps, you know, rings or bark or whatever else might be happening on that wooden bowl. I'm not really going to make that the focus of the painting, but it's nice to, if you have a few minutes to um, adjust something while you're waiting for something else to dry, it's just kind of a great way to use, the, use that time. Now I think that's dry enough that we can go to this focal peach in the center. And again, it's the same technique, but we do have, we can see a really strong uh, crease on that, this peach. So we do want to um, kind of make that a focal point because this is the one that's in the middle and on, well, in the middle of the bowl, it's kind of right on our, um, if we were to dissect this in thirds, both ways, it would be right at one of the really strong points that we would want to have a focal point. So um, it will paint this with you and we'll keep this nice and strong. So um, I don't think I did have a leaf overlapping that originally, but I don't think I want the leaf overlapping now because I do want this to be kind of a focal point. Now, if you ever get in a situation where you've painted a background and you've got, and, and it's kind of run into your uh, foreground, what I like to do is I just like have a small flat hog brush. And I find these are really good for um, if you have, you've lost your edge, maybe 
you've let some other colors creep into that, you can go and you can um, use a wet brush and you can just kind of wiggle that pigment and it will release the pigment from the paper so that you can paint over it. And I'm not even going to blot it off because I will be using those same colors, but I'm able to get rid of any lines that uh, were left behind. So it's a great little, almost like a little magic eraser for you. And these are very inexpensive. You might even have some from like acrylic or oil painting, just wash them real good and you can keep one in your, in your uh, watercolor stash. So I'm going to start off with my yellow and I'm going to hit the brightest areas of this particular peach, which are right here on this edge. And I want to get this kind of quad, like half from that little kind of indent. So this is kind of rise, uh, kind of risen up. I'm going to bring that around and it's going to make this look fuller. And I do want to get a little bit of that on the edge there. Cause that'll be a nice contrast with the other peaches. Put a little in there too. Now I'm going to do my mixed orange. So I've got the cad red and my yellow the cad yellow, cad red, both are the deep versions. And I am going to put that here and kind of over here in the middle. Try not to, just try to keep it kind of loose and let the colors merge together. Then I'm going to clean my brush because I want the red kind of pure on its own. I'm going to grab the cad red and I'm going to add that little kind of point there. And I want to get that, um, that kind of indent, that crease on the peach. So I'm just kind of adding my color to the left hand side of it so that it kind of makes the side come forward a little bit more. And then I can just add some of the red willy nilly. All right, so we've got a lot of good color in there. And then what I want to do is kind of lift out some highlights where, um, where like the edges of the peach would catch the light. So I'm going to get some there and I'm also going to get it right along that crease. Hopefully make it feel a little bit rounded. There. Okay, now we're going to work on the leaves. So I'm going to let this dry and we are going to start on our leaves. So for our leaves, we want to kind of look at our green options. So we've got a green that we can make with, uh, which is really pretty with our turquoise and our cad yellow deep. We also have this pretty olive green. Um, and then we could also use um, yellow ochre and olive if we want a really dull green or yellow ochre in the turquoise or we could use cad yellow and olive green we have a lot of different um a lot of different options here so what i'm going to do is make out some puddles of those paints right here on my palette i'm going to get a bunch of olive green and i like to get it on my palette so that way especially if i'm doing a mix um, it just keeps me from contaminating my colors and reduces waste because I don't have to stop and, and keep cleaning my brush and mixing. So then I'm going to grab a bunch of the cad yellow and throw that up in this area. And I find the cad yellow and the turquoise give me a really kind of fresh, clean green. I think because of the, uh, cause they're, um, cause the, tra the turquoise is so transparent, whereas the olive is just a little bit more, um, a little bit more heavy but I think they're all beautiful, beautiful versions like the olive green and the turquoise will give me a beautiful shadow. Um, and I like to try to keep things pretty fresh. These leaves are pretty bright and fresh and I can always tone them down with some burnt sienna later if I need to. So what I want to do first, I think, is um, kind of go in and put in some of my darker uh, areas. So I'm not going to go right up against that peach, but I do want to get kind of a little bit of a shadow there. I just want to see what it kind of looks like in relation to everything else. That looks really vibrant, but I think that if I grab a little bit of the cad yellow and kind of sneak right up next to it and let those colors blend, then I think that's really going to give me a really pretty green and I'll be able to use that with, um, with some of the other colors here. So I can go 
in whenever I add a color I try to add it a few different places um, even if it does seem really vibrant at first I find a lot of times once I start adding different shades it doesn't become so vibrant it almost just adds a nice little bit of um, interest because you get you know just you get this variety you're using the same colors but you're able to produce a variety with them and so it makes your painting a little bit more interesting you don't need it to be really really dark you can add water and just kind of spread out the pigment I do that quite a bit that's kind of um, like adjusting on the fly and I find that to be very very useful um, I do feel like this color needs to be grounded a little bit so I'm gonna grab my olive and I can add the olive in and that just gives me more of an earthy green and if if I feel like it's just a little too vibrant a little bit of olive will tone it down a little bit I don't want my greens here to be really brown I want them to be nice and fresh even though I am using some neutral like that olive is kind of like a neutral green it's still I still want my greens nice and fresh so what I'm doing in this layer basically is getting a I want to get a variety of of different greens and I want them that's gonna help them not look like a big green blob and it's gonna help all of these leaves kind of retain a little independence as long as I'm painting on dry paper um, I can go pretty much right up next to another leaf and, and color the next one um, if this paper was pre if I was wetting each leaf and then putting the color in I probably would want to skip around a little bit more but I find that for this I can just kind of pretty much go in and uh, and paint them as I wish like I could even go in there and add some darker tones if I want to and still be able to retain um, like the difference between the leaves pretty well they're not what I mean is they're not kind of like smushing into each other the colors aren't kind of blending into each other too badly so here I've just noticed that when I painted the the bowl I did not go in between those leaves I must have thought they were connected so I'm just gonna go in here real quick with a little bit of my burnt sienna and get paint that space between those two leaves I must have thought they looked pretty together but now I'm realizing whoops I they need a little space between them and then I can just add a little bit of that darker mix in there too to darken that up and of course I would want to let that dry before I went into did to paint those two leaves okay so what I'm gonna do for this one I want this one a little lighter I might even add a little yellow ochre because that gives me a nice natural looking leaf color and I think any of the colors you've already used are fair game you know as long as they're yellows blues greens as long as you've used them in your painting already go ahead and use them in your leaves I think the more you can recycle a color the better because it's going to bring harmony to your work if you get a color too dark you can simply blot it yellow ochre is kind of a fun one because it it also has a little bit of an earthiness to it which um, can make maybe a leaf look a little bit more wilty um, it can give it just a little bit more character so so many beautiful greens you can make by either altering greens you already have or by um, or mixing various blues and yellows so basically what we're doing here is just getting a um, getting a shade of green on every leaf that we have and if you didn't sketch one out and you notice you have some whoa that's really turquoise now if that happens go ahead and grab some yellow just go right over it with some yellow mix that right in right on the paper um, yep so our goal here is basically to get all of these leaves painted and they all don't have to be perfect and they all should have a little bit of variety so I think that's dry that's pretty dry now so I can go right up next to it and not really worry about getting fuzzy by the way I'm still using the number 10 I was mixing with so use whatever is comfortable for you that those two are flooding together so I'm going to show you something that's happening we're getting a little bit of a bloom happening right there and I want to show you this I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you can see so when you have um, an area starting to dry on you and then a big juicy wet bit of color smooshes into it you get this kind of thing it looks like a cauliflower 
you can leave that if you like the look of it. Sometimes it looks kind of cool. Um, totally up to you, but if you don't like it, what I recommend is you just kind of go over it with your wipe your like I just blotted my brush off and I'm just going over with it and what I'm doing is I'm repainting this entire area that was kind of damp and that's going to avoid any hard edges forming and that's what a bloom is it's kind of your hard edge forming um, and the pigment getting pushed to the outside and it just ends up making that kind of ruffly shape so that's what you do if you don't want one not a big deal um, so now I'm going to skip over to these two leaves I'm going to turn my paper so that it's a little easier to get at and these I want a little earthier so I'm going to add a little yellow ochre in the mix here yellow ochre and turquoise and I am going to just kind of get in a little bit of that deeper color closer to the peach on both of these and then I'm going to grab my olive on its own I think I'm going to switch brushes though because that one doesn't have a very good point. And then I can kind of drag it out with the olive and I just love the shape of this particular leaf so I really wanted to, um, to make sure I kept that. And you should always feel comfortable moving your painting so that you can, um, you can paint it as, as uh, easily as possible. So if you did notice that you got into an area, like I said before, you want to grab your hog brush. If you notice that you got some color in there you didn't want, you can kind of scrub it and remove any color that you didn't want there. And then go back over with the paint that you intend to paint there. That's called lifting. It's a very useful technique. That olive is pretty. That's the Rembrandt olive green. I also like the Sennelier olive green. They're both really pretty. And I like sap green from a lot of companies. I really like the M. Graham sap green. Because some sap greens, like the Windsor Newton sap green, I find to be a little um, weak. But the M. Graham one is just so, so vivid. And it's so funny because companies use different mixes, different pigments to make their sap greens. And um, we're going to let this dry. It will dry a little bit lighter. And when we come back, we'll add um, some final details. And then you can decide how much more or less you want to do to your painting. I think I want to put some uh, warmer color in the background. I want to get kind of like a wooden feeling, kind of like some wood, kind of bare wood showing through on the tabletop. So I am going to use um, burnt sienna on its own for that. And I'm just going to kind of try it in like a little bit of a kind of hidden area here in the corner. And I'm just going to kind of drag it in. I do like that. I'm wondering if I might want a larger brush. That one might work out all right. I think I will. No, I think I will go with a bigger brush because I think sometimes we get a little fussy when we go with a smaller brush. So I'm just going to put in little patches of this color. You don't have to do this. If you don't like the look of it, then then don't do it. It's your painting. I just think I wanted some kind of, I want it to look kind of like the, um, the woods kind of showing through, just kind of shabby chic on the um, tabletop. But again, it's completely, completely optional. And then maybe go in with this smaller brush that I used originally and add a little bit here too. I like to repeat something, even if I decided to change my mind, if I can repeat that um, same element somewhere else, it won't look like a mistake. It'll look like a design element if you repeat it. So there's a little tip for you there. And I think some yellow ochre might be kind of cool to get in there. Yellow and turquoise. Yellow ochre and turquoise is kind of a cool combination. You can go on the edge of the brush and get some bits of color, almost like an old farm table. It's been painted a few times, you know. It's on there thick. It's been kind of rubbed away. You've got all these different colors. I think it's kind of a cool effect. But of course, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. And I think we'll add a little bit more blue, kind of punch up some of that color. I'm really liking the way this is coming out. This painting is taking me longer than I anticipated because I just, I'm having so much fun kind of playing with the different uh, 
possibilities here. You know what? If you're going around uh, a contour like that, you might even want to paint it in. Paint the edge with like a round brush. Get it in there and then drag it off. Drag it away with the, with the other brush so you don't end up getting uh, getting a stray hair in the area that you're painting. But again, this is also something where you could go, I think, really far because you can get kind of carried away because it's kind of fun to do. So just kind of kind of keep that in mind. I think I also would like a little bit of a shadow um, under my peach there. I'm going to use that original color that we used for our shadows, which was the uh, turquoise and cad red. It would, made such a nice dark that worked really well with this tabletop. So I'm just going ahead and adding that under this peach. And that's just going to help break it apart from that table. And you can look at the reference photo, which I will share on my website in a day or two. If it's not right up when this video comes up, it'll be up probably tomorrow. Um, and then you can you can have a look and see the see the shadows in the um, in the photo as well. And I'm thinking that I might go ahead and do some more of those shadows within the bowl because the bowl was seeming to be a little bit pale in some areas. I think I wasn't sure if I was going to put another leaf in here or what, but it doesn't look that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and deepen that while I'm at it. This is like a number number 12 round, probably a little big for this job, but honestly, I think that I think it, if you get pretty decent brush control, you can go in with a pretty big brush. And use whatever brushes you like. I mean, everyone's going to have their own favorite. I'm not that fussy, really. So, you know, watercolors, you can build up all kinds of layers in watercolors and get exactly the look that you're going for. Just remember, things shift a little bit as it dries. You will end up with a little bit of a lighter color. Um, if you notice that you're getting a hard edge like there, it looks like I'm getting a really hard edge, I'll go in with a dry brush. Just kind of work on that edge a little bit. Kind of soften it. This is a distress table, which is nice because it is very forgiving, I think. I also want to grab a little of that color. Just gonna taper it out. I don't want to have I want it to have like a natural look to it. So I wouldn't want to have that dark and then this piece right here next to it on the other side of the leaf be really light because it wouldn't really go. So I just try to kind of use the color in a few different places to try to make it harmonize a little bit. And I also feel like it, I'm going to go with that different brush though, that's a little too big. I also feel like it ought to be a little bit darker right in here. And I can just kind of fade it out, let it kind of wisp off to nothing. And then I also feel like it should be maybe, maybe a little bit darker right here. Okay, now this would probably be a really good time to take a break. If you're painting along, uh, let your eyes rest a bit. And then when we come back, we'll do some detail on the leaves and the peaches. And there really won't be too much left to do after that. The peach leaves are pretty smooth. So what I'm going to do is use an angled brush. I am going to wet it and just kind of squeeze out the extra. Then I am going to dip the edge of my brush with a point into my green paint. And what I'm going to do is just go along some of these leaves and just really um, highlight or shadow rather one half of them. And, and you know, depending on how they're hitting the light, it doesn't have to be the same half, which is really nice. You can just kind of um, just give a little bit of like a little bit of interest to some of the leaves. It doesn't have to be too fancy and it's just a really quick way to 
add another layer and bit of interest to your leaves. So don't get too fussy with it. Um, you can spend more time on this if you want to, but this is just a really great way to just give them a little bit of extra pizzazz without spending a lot of time. Now I really like these two leaves over here, so I'm going to I'm going to spend a little bit more time with them. I am going to clean my brush. I'm going to pick up the olive green and just kind of tap it on my palette, make sure it's blending in a little bit. I don't I want to have a nice a nice blend, and then I am going to take a little more time on this one and get that center really defined. Get a nice little shadow in there. This leaf, almost, the leaves almost appear to be kind of, um, I don't know, not not withered. Withered's the wrong word. That doesn't sound very appealing, but just kind of, um, they're kind of curly and interesting. Interesting is a better word. Here we go. Now I know that you're probably anxious to uh, to finish up your painting. You can see up here how I have some blooms. It, that's not the end of the world. You can leave them be. I think they're kind of pretty. Or you can just kind of gently paint over them and and they will kind of assimilate back to the, the rest of the leaf. That's fine. And I feel like that one could use a little bit stronger of a center. So I'm just going to go in and add that. And you can work over an area if it gets too dark. Just have fun with it. I mean, just these are very smooth leaves, so you can be just really kind of quick and easy with them. Okay, so now I kind of feel like I want that a little bit more colorful. Give a little bit more to that guy there. When you're working in layers, you can really um, do some fantastic things with your watercolors. Okay, soften that right on the edge so I don't have a hard edge. Now, pretty much what we're doing now is just getting some texture on those peaches and you can really play with your brushes and see what you like best. I generally like to use a larger brush for this and something that's got a little bit of a stiffness to it. So I wouldn't use my super soft brushes. These Mimic Kalinskis are a faux Kalinsky sable, but they're also a little bit, um, they're a little bit stiffer than my faux squirrels. So they're a really good choice. You can of course use whatever you prefer. But that, that would be probably my pick. So you almost want to dry brush. So what I do is I'm, I'm picking up, I'll slide my palette over here a little bit. You can see I'm picking up some of that Cad Red and it's got a teeny bit of turquoise on it. I'm just kind of tapping my brush. What I want is I want some coating on the bristles, but I don't, don't want the bristles to be like coming to a sharp point. I want them to be kind of almost splayed apart a little bit. And then what I can do is I can just kind of dry brush on for a little bit of texture. And what I'd recommend is working on, like that's a really focal point one, that's a really focal point one. So I wouldn't work on those two. What I would do is just kind of um, work on some of these peaches that are not the focal point, they're kind of tucked in back. So that way, if it doesn't come out perfect, um, it's not really gonna matter. They're not the ones that are gonna, that are gonna show that much. I was like, I'm getting a lot of color here, almost more than I want, but, um, but that's alright because I can always blot it off. You can see how I'm getting a lot of strong color there. So I think I'm going to go in now with a lighter color. I'm going to blot my brush off. I've cleaned it. I'm going to blot it off. I'm going to go with some yellow. Some of the Cad Yellow Deep. I'm using the same colors again. I'm going to try spreading my bristles across, apart and I'm going to kind of dry brush on this. And it will lift up some of that paint that I just put on. So if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal because I can kind of move it around a little bit. So you can practice that technique until you feel you have it just the way you want it and you can do that right on a scrap piece of paper even. Okay, so I did that dry brushing technique on these four peaches and it does take a little bit of, um, of getting used to, getting used to the brush that you're using and, you know, um, just that, that technique in general to get what you want to happen. So basically the thing to remember is you're not putting on a ton of paint and you're just trying to gently um, kind of alter what you have there. And it doesn't hurt to actually wipe off your brush before you even attempt 
to bring it onto your paper. Another thing I want to recommend is that you move your paper so that you're comfortable. I know I've mentioned it a lot, but it's really important. So I want to have this kind of darker red next to the um, the divot here, this, this crease or indent. And my brush is really dry and it's just got a little pigment on it. So it can't help but just give you this kind of like rosy blush. Now you do have to be careful that you don't get, like I'm getting some bigger clumps. So sometimes you kind of have to go tap your brush off. Sometimes you even need to add water and tone down the color a little bit. Especially with this red that can be a little difficult to manage. So I'm gonna clean off that red. I'm going to blot my brush, grab a little bit of yellow And then I can go in and add some yellow. That will blend in with the red that I've put on there. And I kind of want to treat this area here because this is kind of one big round bumpy bump area kind of. So I want to kind of keep integrate that together, but I also want it part of this peach as a whole. So. I just keep kind of scrubbing very dry, very lightly until I come up with a texture that I'm happy with. Sometimes you need to remove some paint if that happens. You can go back to your scrubber brush if you want to lift out a highlight. That's a really good brush to use. And you can scrub up against that highlight area. And you can see because we're using cadmium colors here, you lift up really easily. And that also will kind of give you that fuzzy, fuzzy glow that peaches have where like a little hairs on there being lit up. And that would also be really good to do right on this edge here. And then you can do the same thing over here. So we'll do it again. Um, I could add a little bit more of the darker red. I feel like I might need a little bit more of that darker red in here. But it's such a strong color. You do have to be really, um, really cautious with it because it does overpower a little bit. So you just want to make sure you have a paper towel handy for blotting and be sparing with it. But you will see that you will get these patches of darker colors. You do have a lot of, um, a lot of variety of color in one vegetable or fruit. So over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm still working on glaze number one over here. I never put another glaze on it. I don't think maybe I did. I don't remember. This painting's taking a while. And I just try to just kind of scrub on the color using the brush very dry, but that red is very strong. So you will end up with like little jabs of color. But once you notice your brushes kind of, you've kind of run out of color, you can go over an area that might've had too much and you can spread it around a little bit. So the goal is to get, a, you want a soft look, but you also want to take advantage of all the beautiful colors that are there. So now I'm going to pick up some yellow. I didn't even clean my brush. I just went and picked it up because I knew I didn't have much on there and it wasn't going to contaminate what else I had. And I can go and scrub this in a little bit. And the key is just kind of can get that. It's, it's a, it's a soft fuzzy surface, but it's also a little bit rough. It's kind of interesting in that respect. So at this point, you could leave your painting like this and call it finished. Um, I do feel like I'm not happy with um, the kind of the contrast that I have. So I'm going to grab some burnt sienna on my small pointy number four round. I'm going to grab some cad red and some turquoise and make a nice dark color that I can add some some shadows too. I want to get this uh, stem a little crisper. Especially where it comes kind of underneath those peaches. 
I think that's helpful. And I'm also thinking that I could really use some lighter colors. So my choices are to scrub, which we did some scrubbing, or I could use white watercolor, or I could use white um, a white gel pen. So I'm just going to show you the white watercolor, because you probably have this in some of your sets, and you're probably wondering, why do we have this? We hardly ever use it. Um, well, this would be one of those situations where it could actually be quite useful. Now, depending on what you're going to do with your painting, if you use white watercolor, it's often not considered a watercolor anymore. It's considered a gouache or a mixed media. Um, so, you know, you, it may limit you in some showings, but um, I really think that do what's going to be right for your painting and don't worry about the rules of art. Um, I typically don't use white very often, but sometimes I will use white because it's it's a quicker way to get me where I want to go with a painting. I can dry brush this kind of on and get that fuzz. This is a Chinese white, and a Chinese white is not very opaque. It's not going to um, alter things that much. It's not going to alter things as much as, say, a white gel pen would or bleed proof white would. So it's a very subtle... Uh, subtle effect and I do I do usually try scrubbing first like we did and I see if I get enough contrast that way before I do go, go for the white because I do like that look a little bit better but um, at the end of the day I'm gonna go for what is going to make what's going to express what I'm trying to express in my painting better so you can do what you want to do I just want to give you that um, just want to give you that point of view I used to be very much a pure, you know, watercolors, don't use white, white is awful, you know. But then I realized it's good to learn how to not use it, it's good to learn how to avoid it and, and save the white of your paper, but it's also nice to not, you know, be so stuck in your ways that you throw away a painting just because you happen to use white. I don't think there's any virtue in that. Um, I think it's, you know, learn the rules and then break them if you want to, but learn them first. So you'll notice that these, I mean, they really do fade once they dry. The, the white really does tone down once it's dry. Now something I did on this painting was I did a little dew drop and I did that with, um, I actually did that with a gel pen, but first you need to get, kind of like set the stage of your of your dew drops. So if I decide I want a few dew drops, I might do this one over here. Like maybe this one's a separate because it's been washed. So what I would do is just kind of draw a couple dew drops on. And I will tend to kind of fill them in. Fill them in on one side and pull a shadow one on the other side. And then um, I would go in with a gel pen. I'm going to dry that really quick. And then I would just kind of outline the dew drop on one side. And then I would just kind of get a little bit on the other side. Not a ton. I would just kind of get, kind of define it a little bit. And then go in with some more of my darker color. I would go with the uh, turquoise and red mix. And just kind of, because I do have a shadow coming over on this side, so I do want to get that shadow over here, just like I have under the peach. I'm just going to soften it by cleaning my brush off and just kind of blotting it off. Soften it and pull it in a little bit. There's other ways to do drops too. This is just 
it's kind of a nice quick way and I feel like I want to get maybe a little yellow in there because I did have some yellow and then I feel like I also need a little bit more shadow under on the table there now that I'm noticing that that's kind of, that kind of washed away so I'm going to go paint this in and just kind of drag it out And then maybe you can take a little bit of that color up to the dew drop. I added a little bit more red to it just because I feel like I don't have enough contrast up here. And maybe even do a little bit of a highlight in there. Okay, so I'm going to dry this again and then come back for a high highlight and we'll be done. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes since I uh, since I left you here, and funny story, I'm wearing a poncho, and I reached over to, uh, I don't know, reach something, and I knocked my drink over onto my watercolor palette and completely uh, covered my desk. So I had to go and clean up that mess and then come back to the painting, and um, I don't know. Things might have changed, but we're going to just kind of finish up here. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I'm such a klutz and it's late. <laughs> so hopefully we're all right. But uh, um, I might have added a little bit to that, just trying to um, kind of fix what happened when I spilled. But what, I, what I'll do sometimes is just kind of scratch over with a gel pen and just kind of... Um, add little highlights here and there or just even add some fuzz here and there if I feel like my composition just isn't strong enough with traditional watercolors I would recommend that you take a little time take a break from your painting and then look at it and see what you really need I do find with the gel pen I can like add it and then blend it with my finger or even blend it with a damp brush it, it will stay water soluble for a little bit then it will get um, permanent so uh, and water resistant so kind of keep that in mind but you can even glaze over it a little bit if you decide that you've you know put some down and it's too bright um, it really is a fun product to use with your watercolors now of course not a traditional watercolor medium it's not going to be considered a traditional watercolor when you're done but um, but as far as like getting the look that you want getting that fuzz getting the highlights on dew drops it's a great way to do it I don't like my dew drops on this as well as I did on my practice piece but I did um, I wasn't trying to film a tutorial or work with any time constraints when I did this so you know that doesn't make a difference when you're painting but I'm pretty happy with the way this came out and I hope you do try it if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I would be more than happy to try and answer them for you hope you enjoyed this summary watercolor tutorial and I encourage you to listen to the audiobook The Peach Keeper by Sarah Addison Allen. It's a lovely way to spend an afternoon painting. You can listen for free with your Audible 30-day free trial. Please visit audible.com slash frugalcrafter or click the link in the video description to start your free trial today. Thanks again so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Until next time, happy crafting.